have the Strive to Thrive 300. That's right. Okay. And you're going to go with Strive to that, Thrive right? 300, yeah. Um, Strive to Thrive 300 is about myths about anger. Now, granted, after doing this for 16 years, we know a lot of lists about anger, myths about anger. Um, so we, we picked five that we think you might be interested in. That's right. And I'm going to start off with the first one, if you will. Here we go. Okay, I'm, I'm listening. Are you listening? Uh -huh. All right. It's my right to be as angry as I want to be. It's my right to be eh. as angry as you give me it the eh. not, Okay. It is not your right to be as angry as you want to be. Well, tell me more, wise well, one. Well, when you're in, you know, when you're in relationships, I when I think about people being as angry as I want to be, I think of the yellers and screamers. Because those are the only people I've ever ah, heard that say, I have the right to be as angry as I okay. want to be, as they point to me with their finger and they want to get in my face about they have this right. But some people believe that if they've got that notion and it's in that energy's inside of them, that mm -hmm. they have the permission to let it out. And that's where they're wrong. It, there's nothing wrong with them being angry. They're wrong in that they believe that it's okay for them to violate other people's space, that it's okay for them to yell and scream and curse as a means to get their point across. And, and that's the point we're trying to get at because... You know, our company, Interventions, is all about relationships. And, and when we talk about relationships, we're talking about two people that are attempting uh, to get along and communicate in ways that mm -hmm. are functional, not dysfunctional. And, and so you don't have the right to be angrier than is uh, acceptable to your partner. Right. And at, and at some... Otherwise, you're, you're, um, you're um, emotionally ab abusing them. Sure. Because Absolutely. it's emotional overuse. You're that's overusing right. your verbals and nonverbals to get your point of your anger across. And that's and what we like to teach. You don't need to, you uh, don't need to be that intense. Guilt and shame. Guilt is you made a mistake. Shame is you are one. Mm -hmm. but, but what I want you to know is, you know, you never have permission to be angrier or to experience intense emotions more than what's comfortable to your partner. That's right. Uh, more than what's effective towards just letting them know that there's some issue that needs, needs to be resolved. That's right. Uh, I'm going to go on to number two and write here. Number two. Number two. There's something wrong with people that get angry. There's something wrong with people. <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you, I've heard, I've, heard, I've heard people say, my God, she's a nut. My God, he's crazy. And when I ask why, they say, because he's such a hothead. Now, it could be, it could be that they truly are. Well, I've seen some of those. We call those, those trade angry people that have, lo that have low impulse control and, again, tend to yell and scream and get in your face. Mm -hmm. And, again, there's, there's still nothing wrong with, with people that get angry. We're all going to get angry. Right. We, anger is actually okay. Anger is a feeling. Where we go wrong is, what do I do with this feeling that I have? What choices am I making? And when we make poor choices... Yeah. Now we have people that are upset with us. We have people that don't talk to us. We have the police rolling up to the, to the situation to, you know, calm everything down. And, and, and so it's not the experience of anger that's a problem. It's what you do with it. And that's what we kind of focus at, uh, at our clinic when we work with people. Mm -hmm. um, Carrie's going to do the next one. Uh, it's, it is healthy to get stuff off my mind. I wonder what she means by stuff. Stuff, you know, stuff. Stuff. The stuff I want to talk about. The stuff that's bothering me. <laughs> and the word by itself, we can't tell exactly what the stuff is. No. But, but I'll tell you when your stuff is to evaluate or grade or criticize another person, mm -hmm. then that stuff is, of course, it's unhealthy. And it, it causes payback. It causes retribution. So I would say it's so not it's, healthy. It's not healthy when it's stuff. stuff <laughs> indescript. And when you are evaluating the other person sure. based upon your stuff. Yeah. If, just if, it said, if this said, if we said it's healthy to to get things in the open so that we might problem solve, mm -hmm. then I would say we're heading in the right direction. I'm gonna give you one more, and here we go. Right? It's normal for kids to fight and get angry. Let them work it out. Eh. Eh. She doesn't like that one either. <laughs> I don't like that one either. Okay. I I um I had a man in group last week who um raised his hand we were talking about uh, values and he says you know i'm teaching my son that if somebody picks on him at school he needs to pick back more so they never do it to him again and i stopped i stopped in my tracks i was standing in front of the group and i stopped in my tracks and turned around and just and looked at him and and said are you are you out of your mind so i get this big eye i get this big doe in the headlight look back like well what do you mean am i out of my mind are, are you crazy you are an adult and, and you are telling your son, how old is he? 13. Your 13-year-old son that it's okay to beat the crap out of another kid. Well, obviously, the bad part here is that the other kid has been taught pride through submission, and that never works for long, does it? No. Uh, so, so the idea that 
uh, kids don't have the wisdom, there are potentially problems that they can resolve at a level that is more appropriate. And sometimes the parent has to introduce that wisdom there. Because remember, as a parent, you're also a mentor. Right. And, and, and that's where the guy, that's where this guy's missing it. He wants to, he wants to just teach his son to go out and do it and don't get sure. me involved. Whereas, you know, when there's something going on in the son's life at school, the the son may be able to talk to the kid at his own level, but if it gets to where I need to talk to the teacher, I'm really having a hard time at school. We need to start getting adults around us involved. You know, in, in contrast to the advice you give to your son to not don't take any crap for someone, mm. can you imagine the, the doorbell rings and your son sees you go to the front door? And the next thing he sees is you're rolling in the front yard, beating the crap out of the guy. <laughs> the who, kid's father, right? Who, who comes who told to the door. you, you know, that you're ugly and the, you know, tell yeah. you, tell you where to put your head. But, but obviously, you know, we don't realize that this jockeying for position and status, especially for right. teens, is a part of their growth, part of that transitional growth as their hormones kick in, as they begin to develop right. the social status. Um, we have time for one more, don't we? Um, Number five. We can if you want. I, um, I have it. I said I was sorry. What more do you want? Mm -hmm. That's our fifth myth about anger. I said I'm sorry. What What more more do you want? want? And I've even caught my son doing that with the kids in the neighborhood. He'll say, look, I said I'm sorry. Yeah, I've seen it. I've I've seen it a lot. I don't, I, that's a myth and it's not okay because um, we want to get off with not having to be accountable. I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to do anything, even though I hurt your feelings or violated your space or didn't do something that I told you that I would do. I just want to say I'm sorry and let's not talk about it anymore. And that, that's just, that's and, wrong. And if you will, whenever there's the notion of I said I'm sorry, there's two things that we try to teach people that come through our clinic, the people that we work with. Number one is to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And the second thing is, what do I do to, what make, do it I do to, to make it up? And, you know, for whatever it's worth, when we've used this in our own um, neighborhood with the kids in the neighborhood, and I've heard kids say, you know, I said, I'm sorry. Um, we've stopped them to realize, if you will, that's not enough. Right. Now to make it up to them. And, uh, and that accountability, see, honesty, I said, I'm sorry. Accountability, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about that it? That has just turned things around to where the kids really get along much better. Okay? That's right. So there you have it. That's the end. The five myths about anger as the Strive to Thrive 300. Just a reminder, our topic today.